thank you very much that you are here with us with this uh, multiply event for two projects, very important projects for EAC and for the whole agriculture. At first, I would like to invite uh, our uh, actual president uh, of EAC, uh, Stefania Gasperini, to say a few words. Good morning, everybody. I thank you. It's a very crowded uh, day for us. Uh, so it means that EAC is growing more and more, and we have more and more success. And this is a great thing for agriculture and our colleagues everywhere. And um, so I thank you from EAC, and I thank you, our sponsors, because uh, for the first time, I, we really have uh, we have the historical the historic um, um, sponsor. Fasse Ferlag, and uh, we think, thank he, him so much because they, they, he supported us for all these years, but for the first time we also have other uh, sponsors, and so this means that we can grow more and more. So we uh, thank Grihil and the city of Antwerp that hosted, is hosting us so well. So thank you, and I hope you will enjoy these days uh, very much, and uh, thank you for the work of the uh, committees and the group of um, these very interesting working groups and projects. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you very much, Stefania. So, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my task is to uh, tell you something about, uh, in general, about arboricultural standards, their development, and uh, specifically uh, about the part which is now in the process, the consulting star standards. I'll start with, uh, let's say, the gen general uh, view at the problematics because uh, arboricultural standards, uh, this is a project which runs now for four years. And in fact, it started in 2017 because um, many of you know that uh, we got first, uh, uh, let's say, some um, small budget from EAC to make a pilot project to start the discussion to learn whether we as the industry can really agree on something, uh, something substantial. So uh, the first uh, Erasmus project was called TEST and the uh, result was the uh, development of three practical standards for, for arboriculture, pruning, planting and cabling bracing. Uh, most probably you know that uh, the final uh, kickoff of these standards uh, occurred last summer in, uh, in, uh, in near Prague at the conference. Uh, you uh, can download these standards at this moment from these pages. If you scan just this QR code, it will lead you to the, to the page where these standards are freely available. And uh, uh, the, the conference is recorded for you, so don't worry as well if you miss it. You can, with this barcode, get to the YouTube channel where not all, but the majority of the lectures and uh, the material is, is made available. So. Uh, look at that and I think uh, the discussion was very very interesting and you know I must say that uh, altogether the first three years proved that our industry is let's say mature enough to set a generic standard. At the same moment we discovered that even if we agree on the basic uh, things, basic uh, rules, there are quite substantial national or regional differences. So uh, you probably know that for each standard, every country or every language uh, group can create their own national appendix, annex, which defines these differences or specifics or whatever. So uh, if you uh, are from, or just you know, to recognize partners maybe first, and. So these, these are the partners who, uh, who created this uh, first set of standards for you. And uh, uh, the standards, you know, quite uh, started to grow very quickly. Uh, uh, several countries, not many, but several countries already printed their printout versions in the, their languages. Uh, either they can be distributed for free or the 
party who translates the standards uh, is authorized to sell them. It's just up to up to them normally, but the PDF, the final PDF with the translation must be made uh, freely uh, accessible. So on the pages you can, uh, you can find the language variants which are already uh, available. By the way, uh, at this moment we've got something like 15 languages in process, even if uh, within the project we promise only two. So for me this is a big you know, step forward that the, the appreciation of this, these standards is really huge and uh, uh, we are in close communication with the translating parties. Uh, you see that even Turkish, Ukrainian, language, Greek uh, languages which are really pretty far from what we know and what we expected uh, are uh, already uh, already started to translate the standards. So again, if you are from countries which are not listed, you have uh, free possibility to join, to uh, uh, sign the agreement with uh, with the uh, with the let's say team of test. The license is uh, completely free. The only two uh, parameters are that the final PDF must be made freely available. The PDF, the printed copy is up to you. And second thing that no changes in the text must occur. Uh, this is maybe another message because uh, at this moment EAC already preliminary agreed that uh, uh, there will be a working group on, on uh, arboricultural standards created where we would like to invite uh, even the, the translating parties to be part of some discussion table. And we aim to create every plus minus five years new version of the standard which reflects the you know, errors or not clear uh, uh, statements in the, in the standards. And of course, as the industry will develop, we are or we aim to develop the standards as well. So. Uh, this project, I think, was very successful and we really strongly hope that this will uh, influence the industry substantially. And uh, now the, the eCost project, which is the follow-up project for this activity. And the aim is even, even uh, bolder because we tried to uh, create the basis for the consulting part of the, of the industry. And you know very well that uh, the, let's say, technical part, if I say, okay, prune branch like this, I can show you how to do that, do it like this is better. It's lots of research on these practical parts. But with the consulting arboriculture, it's much more, let's say, vague uh, area of, of, of knowledge or expertise. So the main message is not really to create new method or to promote one of methods or methodologies which are, uh, which are being used, but more or less to guide the, or to define, let's say, the philosophy, not, not, uh, something not to forget or uh, to press maybe more forward some ideas which at this moment are not always be, being taken in account. So this part is really still in process. Dirk uh, will show you more in detail what we already did. So what the first standard, the tree assessment standard is about. And uh, my aim is just to maybe more show you what, uh, what the, the process is and how, uh, how looks the, uh, the background. So it's, uh, it seems that it's lots of fun, but I can tell you that <laughs> majority is not worth to take pictures of because we really sit in the room and really go sentence by sentence and it's, it's pretty demanding. On the other hand, I must say that the discussions are really, you know, um, bring light into areas, into, into uh, ideas which just normally are not discussed in, in depth. So we are really happy that we go through this process and we really hope that 
the result will be, will be worth. The main philosophy for the creating of the standards and especially for the consulting standards are that we are not uh, describing methods, so we are not describing you know, methodologies or tools which are, which are on the market because this is something which develops which we definitely don't want to take any position on. On the other hand, we, uh, we want or the, the main idea is to uh, show the principles of uh, various kinds of, uh, no, 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 don't, various kinds of, uh, mm, let's say, approaches. And uh, uh, the aim is more to, uh, to show, to stress the, uh, the uh, well, not forget any, any uh, important part of of uh, the, the, the process uh, of assessment or protection or whatever. In each standards, uh, and uh, this holds true even for the practical standards, we divide the uh, advices or the, the statements into three levels. First is uh, requests. So what we are sure we all agreed on that this must be part of the procedure. Second level is something which is more advisory. So we are convinced that it should be, but um, we don't take uh, either we don't take this uh, this area so as to be so important or maybe there is some uh, small doubt that some specifics could arise and the last one but even that is important that we just uh, define areas which are maybe more philo philosophical on the other hand still uh, the consultant or the user of the standard should be aware of them and should take them seriously. Definitely uh, quite a large uh, part of our discussions and a large part of the problem is that we, uh, we strive to uh, advocate for the trees really because you know very well that in many areas we already uh, went through discussions from road ma maintenance authorities with uh, development uh, companies uh, with, with many other parties but uh, one of the sentences which I've got in my head, which was uh, stated on one of these meetings, that just trees have only us. And if we will not protect the trees, there is no one else really who would. Yeah? So uh, one of the mm, really important parts of the philosophy is to, let's say, make the industry not, uh, or to lead the industry not to the technical solutions and to this, you know, uh, parts which are defined by other parties as well, but to really fight for the trees, their rights, uh, their space and their functionality. In the consulting standards uh, came on the table one really basic thought and one basic, basic idea which really leads through all the standards, that uh, in the past our industry really oriented quite a lot on the risk part of the process. And it's logical because this is one of the first uh, fears which the tree owner or the manager has. On the other hand, uh, and, and we developed lots of tools, methods, and we are really good in defining tree risks. On the other hand, if our industry just speaks all the time about the risk of the tree, even if it's minimal, whatever, but we concentrate the intention of the users of the trees on the risk part, at the same moment we come into the problem that if I as a tree owner uh, here, the tree is risky, I don't want it, so fell it. I don't want uh, the risk. Yeah? So uh, in last years, I think more and more comes to the table the thought we should not, even if not uh, abandoning this, this is essential part, but we should more orient our efforts and our methods and our reports to the part to explain how valuable the trees are. So not only define the risk, even if minimal, but more concentrate on the part where the trees just, why should I accept the risk? That, that's the idea. So explain to the public that trees are what they are. Yeah? So this is maybe one of the um, really red lines which goes through the, uh, through the consulting standards at this moment. And I think that this is very, very important part. Uh, for me, quite nice or very interesting part of the discussion was, let's say, the language purity. 
Yeah, and uh, one of the things which really we, we struggle now is to get rid of some of the terms which describe the trees in negative uh, connotation. You know very well, if I say about something, that's a defect. At the same moment, I say, okay, I need to solve it. I need to do something with that. But you are, you are aware of the fact that if I say the cavity is a defect, I'm lying, really. It can be defect, but normally it's not. It's just part of the development of the tree. So uh, part of this uh, definition of the standards is even that we change the voc vocabulary. And uh, I must tell you that get rid of the word defect was really hard work. Yeah? In the, we, we did it already in the standard of tree pruning. And it took hours just to find a feature, a symptom, and these terms not to look stupid, but to express what we want. And you know, these words are so uh, inertly in our reports, in, in our, our thinking procedure, that the change really brings something. Yeah, it's, maybe it looks not important, but I can assure you if you start to, let's say, purify your language from these uh, anthropogenic terms which describe <laughs> trees, it will bring uh, something new into your head and into your, your processes. So the fight against defects is pretty you know, uh, important. And please don't take it uh, like black and white situation. Of course, if we speak, for example, in the standard of tree cabling bracing, if we speak about the reasons why we stabilize trees, of course it's defect. Yeah, because then we are solving some problem which has been already assessed. So uh, don't be afraid that if you say defect, you will be uh, get <laughs> get out from the from room. No, it's just uh, you know to uh, to think about the, this this let's say um, features differently. And uh, again, one of the big parts of the logic, and for me more and more in, uh, one of uh, of the of importance is that we uh, more and more push the industry into the appreciation of old trees. You know, this is really something which will take time. You are aware of the project of veteran tree certification, which EAC uh, holds as a specific certification. And for those of you who didn't try to get through it or didn't took it seriously yet, please reserve your time and look into the materials. Because, you know, tree, to understand tree, without taking into account the senescence or the, the, the old stage of the tree. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we don't understand tree at all. Because all the phase from younghood until maturity is just the start, it's nothing. It's five, ten percent of the living span of the tree. So it's not like our ontogenetic curve when we are young, beautiful, adult, old, dead. <laughs> That's it, yeah? So that's that's pretty simple, simple curve. But trees don't uh, look like that. They do up till the adulthood just to start to be a tree. And the real tree is veteran tree. Yeah, so uh, overlooking this is, you know, it's logical because all the industry, we train young trees and this is, you know, 80, 90% of the procedures, whatever it can be. But at the same moment, we must appreciate the, the senescence as well. And this brings in account completely different methods, completely different approaches, because the old trees can be pruned like the young ones and many other things. So even with the standards, we just uh, uh, try not to just you know, define what we can, but to show the overlap, to, to lead the users into the appreciation of, of uh, senescent trees as well even if we are very aware of the fact that it's very hard really to connect these two specializations into one text. So still keep in mind that I'm very happy that the certifications for ETW and veteran tree specialists are separate because it makes sense. It definitely is important. So arboriculture probably in future will need much more specific, let's say, roles. So this is, this is one of those. Yeah, and uh, you know that uh, the, the aim is to create three standards altogether. Tree assessment is plus minus, let's say, 
at the end of the development where we have uh, another meeting and then the standard will be sent to you all for the first as the first draft to uh, to comments tree value calculation recently started it's it uh, was just you know definition of the of the area so this is this is still in a large process and the, uh, the last one the protection and development activities we feel that this is one of the most important points within the functioning of the urban environment in this moment but at the same moment we hope that these you know uh, methods are already developed so we will hopefully just summarize them for for Europe well we'll see we'll see yeah and that's plus minus from my side everything just meet the meet the team who uh, creates the standards for you you will meet us for the next two years again and uh, at the end I would like to end my speech very specifically probably as a first one on this venue with the poem in the realm of trees where branches sway where arborists stole day by day a standard rose firm and strong to elevate tree care where it belongs european arboriculture standards they declare a quest for professionalism beyond compare with knowledge and skill we shall abide nurturing trees with love and pride like roots that anchor deep and true these standards ground us through and through they guide our hands with wisdom's grace as we care for trees in every place from lofty canopies to roots unseen the arborist's touch is keen with safety as our paramount goal we strive to nurture body and soul each cut we make a thoughtful art preserving nature's beauty's heart for in our care the trees shall thrive their beauty, vitality, and stories alive. European standards, a beacon bright, shining the path in arborist light. Together we rise as a unified force, enriching the field with expertise, of course. So let's embrace these standards true, as we tend to trees in all that we do. For with professionalism we ascend, ensuring our legacy for trees we defend. In forests deep and urban sprawl, European agricultural standards stand tall. With passion and knowledge, we shall unite. For the love of trees, we'll forever fight. Thank you, artificial intelligence, for this poem. <laughs>